All right, so now we have uh, a admin view with a way to add links. I went ahead and populated um, some more links. Basically, I've got two keywords, Builder and Chrome. Um, so these will be links that all map to one of those two keywords that I'll be able to search on. So now what I want to do is I want to connect um, my search function to actually pull from the database, and I want to populate the search results with um, the corresponding uh, results based on that keyword. So let's start um, with our landing page and our search input. Um, so what I want to do here is I want to click on um, this input search, and um, I want to – actually, I want to click on this Google search uh, button. So on this button, when I click search, I want to fire off an event that actually searches the database. So what I'm going to do is go to events, and on click, I'm going to say new flow. And I'm going to say search term. And what I want to do is I want to um, open a page. Uh, and I'm going to open it into the current tab. And I need a route to open this. So um, earlier we created one route for our admin links. We need to create another one for our search results. Um, so actually, let's just do all of our routes here. So um, our home page is just um, going to be slash, and this will just be our home. So that'll be easy. Let's create another one for our search results. Um, and we're going to call that search. And this will be our search results page. OK. So now we've got a couple of routes. So when you click this search, I want it to load that search page. And then there's the after route text, meaning what do you want to add after uh, this route? And I want to add two things. So I'm going to use the concatenate function, which lets me string together some text. So I want to question mark Q equals. Basically, uh, I'm just saying this is going to be my, my query. Um, and then I want to add another value, which is going to be my input. So I'm going to say from element value, input search value. So this is going to load a a new URL in our browser, which is slash search, which is going to load this search results page. And it's going to add the parameter Q, um, which is you could that could be whatever you want it to be. It could be keyword, it could be search, whatever search term, whatever you want. I'm just using Q um, for query. And I'm going to say, you know, populate the rest of the URL with whatever I put into that search field. And that's going to load this page with that URL. So um, we can actually test that out. If we go preview and search, oh, wrong one. So we can actually test that out if we go preview and home page. So here's our search on the home page. If I type in builder, and hit search, you'll now see it redirected me to my search page. So I'm on slash search and Q or query equals builder. Nothing's loading uh, because we haven't told this page what to do when it happens, but you can see that we are uh, now able to load that page. So a couple more things. Um, I want the same action if I also hit the enter key. Um, so if I type something and just hit enter instead of hitting the search button, I want that to work as well. So in order to do that, uh, we're going to come back here. And on this input search, um, we want to say basically on key down um, or key press. I guess we could use key press. Um, we want to load that action that we just created called search term. and uh, for the key code, we're going to say enter. So when we hit enter, we're going to run this action search term. 
um, and that should have the same result as um, if we hit the search button. So let's go ahead and test that out. So now if I type Chrome and hit enter, we see that it does the same thing. Loads my search page and adds my query onto the end of it, Chrome. All right, so this page is pretty much good now. Let's move on to um, the search results page. So uh, what I wanna do here is based off of that query that's in our URL, I want to uh, query the database and pull in any results that match that. So there's a very simple way to do that in Builder with this grid list. If I click on the grid list, over here in the data tab, I've not yet told it where to get this data from. If you remember from our links uh, table, I told it to pull all the links in the database. Well, we're gonna do something similar for um, the search results, except we're gonna add a filter for that query. So let's say collection list, links, get all fields, but then right here under filters, we're gonna add a filter. And this is going to say where keyword equals, and if we scroll down to the bottom, uh, request under advanced, we want request. That is the request that was sent to the browser. And then the type is going to be a uh, query string. And the query string name is just Q. So this will basically say pull all uh, items from the database where the keyword matches uh, whatever keyword was passed in the URL. So now let's test that out. All right, so uh, I just realized we forgot one thing. So now it's loading. You can see that it's searching by this term. We do have two results in the database that use the keyword Chrome, but you'll notice it's displaying my uh, placeholder text. And that's because here on um, our row, we didn't tell it to, um, we didn't tell it to uh, load from the database. So let's go through and link each of these to the database. So um, we're just gonna say from a field, and this one is in links, and the field is link. Same thing here for the name or the title. And then the last one is the description. So now when this results page loads, it's gonna pull and populate each of these fields from the database. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so now you see we have uh, two search results um, that match the keyword Chrome, and uh, there they are. And if we go back, we can try the same thing with the term builder. So we type in builder, I'm gonna hit enter. Now you'll see we have three search results with the keyword builder. So there's a few more things we wanna do here. I wanna have the search bar always match uh, or always populate with whatever um, was in the search term. And then I wanna update these, this line here that tells us how many results we have to actually list the right number of results. So uh, let's do the results one first, because that's nice and easy. All right, so on page load, we want to set that value. So I'm just gonna use element set value, and we are going to set uh, the value of this text that says how many results. And we're going to get the value, actually we wanna concatenate because we want to add two strings together. Um, so first, we're going to pull the current uh, grid list count. So I'm gonna say on the current page, grab the grid list, and instead of value, I'm gonna look at the data, and then I'm gonna add a path that is length. And this is just literally a JavaScript function 
that counts how many records are in this grid list data. So I'm adding a path called length, and then I want to, on the end of that, I'm adding text that is space results. So basically I'll have a number and then a space and then the word results, and we can test this out. So with our search for the term builder, we can see now it says three results. And if I uh, go back to the home page and search Chrome, we'll see it says two results. So we've got that connected now. Now let's make this search box uh, work as well. So I want to create a new action on this page, a new flow, I should say, called search. And in this new flow, um, we are going to perform the same action um, as we did in the other page. So I'm actually going to come over here into my flows search term, and I want to copy this. So I'm going to copy this action of basically loading the page with that query. And in my search, I'm gonna paste, oopsie, I'm gonna paste that uh, same action. So current tab slash search, add my query with my keyword, and we need to pull that from this input page or this input field right here. All right, so um, that is my action called search. Now I need to connect when does this, when does this action fire? And similar to um, our other page, our landing page, I want to fire that action when I hit the enter key. So let's go to events. On key up, I'm gonna add a key code for enter and tell it to search. So let's test it out. So I'm on the search results page already. We searched the term Chrome and this is what we got. I'm going to instead search builder. And I see as soon as I type in builder and hit enter, it loads my three results. And I can go back and search Chrome and it'll load my two results. So now we've got that working and uh, we're able to load our results. I also want to connect to this Google uh, logo to take me back to the home page. So that's really simple to do on my search results. I click on the Google uh, logo and I say uh, new flow. And I'm going to call this uh, go to home page. And Let's say open page. And we just want to open our home page. And that's it. So, oh, and I like to add my uh, cursor just so I know it's clickable. All right, so now once I've searched, I have uh, the ability to just click on that Google logo and I can go back to the home page. And now I've got a full two way search. I can come back, type in another term. I can stay on this page, type a different term, and there's my search results. All right, so now we want these links to actually work when you click on them. And as I mentioned, um, on Google, when you hover over either the URL or the name, it sort of treats them as one and um, will allow you to uh, click um, no matter which one you hover over. So we want to add that same functionality. So in my search results row, that is why I created this div link that has both of these items under it. So let's add an action to this div link 
and on click, we're going to create a new flow called go to URL. And we are going to, you guessed it, open a page into the browser. So um, we're going to open a new page. Uh, for this, I actually want to open in a new tab, um, just because I, I like to do that. And the page route to open is now going to come from an element value, which is the value of this URL field. So whatever is in there, that's where the page is going to take us when we click. So let's go back to our search results. Let's refresh. So I'm gonna test this out with uh, Chrome. So I'm gonna click on that. And there we go. It loads our Chrome page. We can also uh, test some of the builder links. And we've got uh, this uh, builder homepage. So if we click here, that takes us to the builder homepage. So now these links work. And again, I can't help it. I gotta add that pointer styling. So there we go. So now, no matter which part of, you know, whether I hover over the URL or the name, just like Google's uh, search engine, it will uh, show the pointer and I can click on it and load a page. And so the last thing I want to do is I want this search field to stay populated with whatever search term I use, even if I entered it on the other page. Um, and that's really so that I have, um, you know, a reference to, to be able to look up and see what did I search to get here. So if we come back down um, into our search results page, So on page load, um, right now we're setting the uh, value of our results count. I, I wanna use the same method to just set um, the value of this search field. So if we come here to set value and use this action, basically what I wanna do is find that input search and the value is going to be from our request query string Q, oops, Q. So if I refresh this page now, I search the term builder and I see that builder is in the search field. If I go back to the home page, I can search uh, Chrome and I'll see that it lo loads the term Chrome. That way I know what, what term I searched and it stays populated with that. So there you have it. That's a basic um, clone of the Google search engine you, uh, made with Builder. So just to recap uh, what we learned building this clone, uh, you learned how to create page layouts, the basics of CSS, how to add font awesome icons. Uh, we worked with the grid list element. We created some actions and flows. Uh, you, we worked with data collections, including how to manage the data within those data collections. And we learned how to use data listeners and page routes. But uh, yeah, thanks for building along.